I'm Judy Zelina. This is the Mill Creek Government Channel. The Erie VA Medical Center provides health care services to veterans in northwestern Pennsylvania, Ashtabula County, Ohio, and western Chautauqua County, New York. They offer a variety of health services to meet the needs of our nation's veterans. The mission of the Medical Center to provide exceptional health care to veterans has dominated the organization's culture in such a way that everything they do is directly linked to their mission. They understand that responsibility goes beyond serving just the veteran. They are serving the families and the community as well. Joining us in the program today, we have the newest director, John Gennaro, and we also have Sarah Gudgeon. She is a familiar face on the program. <laughs> she is the public affairs specialist, and I had it kind of cheap, because I can never remember. <laughs> Once you get a title more than two words, exactly. I have to That's refer right. to my notes. I'll, I'll respond to anything, Judy. Thank you so much for joining us. Our and pleasure. John, it is us. a pleasure to have the director. Yes. What I'd like, uh, before we get into a brief overview of the VA, uh, let our viewers know a little bit of your background and how you came on board in, in this position. Yeah, absolutely. I've been serving veterans for nearly 20 years now. Uh, my VA career started back in 1997 uh, at the Cincinnati VA Hospital where I did my uh, residency, uh, an administrative residency um, out of Xavier University. And I uh, went to their healthcare program, so I have a background in sciences and health administration, my master's in business. And VA has been such a fantastic training ground. And that is one of our missions uh, nationwide is not just a training ground for you know, physicians and nurses, but administrators too. And I did my specific training at the VA in Cleveland. And so I've been in Cleveland, Cincinnati, uh, Butler, PA, Pittsburgh, PA, and actually in 2006 was the Chief Operating Officer here at the Erie VA. And what I really loved about the Erie VA is just the community, the culture, the hardworking, dedicated people at that facility. And when the opportunity came back just uh, nearly two years ago now, uh, I said, that's the facility I want to be at. That's the community I want to serve. And I came back with my family, uh, my wife and my little son, uh, and we've established Erie as our home again. So it's great to be back here in Erie. Well, we're glad to have you on board. Thank you. And with John on board, we're seeing a lot of booming that we're going to be talking about, booming on your campus with new growth. But what I'd like to uh, uh, let our viewers know, just give us a little bit of overview of, of the VA. So Erie VA Medical Center, we've been providing health care to veterans for more than 65 years. Um, and we offer everything from primary care services to general surgery to cataract surgery, which is a new offering, um, to specialty services and even uh, specialize in behavioral health, which we've talked about before is such a need for our nation's veterans yes. and for their families. Yes. So we really provide comprehensive health care right here at the Erie VA Medical Center. And we also have five community-based outpatient clinics, which is our our fancy way of saying basically a, a local community clinic that veterans in our rural areas can even go to. Uh, we have those clinics in our Ashtabula, Crawford, Venango, Warren, and McKean counties. So we cover a very wide catchment area um, and really, really are uh, striving to provide the best, um, most up-to-date specialized services for our veterans and veteran specific illnesses um, we really specialize in so that's why we are one of the best choices for veterans to attend to because we have that background we have that specialty skill in what they've experienced and what they've gone through and can really focus and tailor our services to the veteran you know what I admire about the Erie VA too and especially with talking with Sarah through the years if you see a need you know, all of a sudden, something that's maybe just totally, you know, um, out of your comfort zone or something that you're not used to doing, you see this need, you recognize it, and you guys you develop a program. You Absolutely. grow with it. Absolutely. And I'm just so amazed how you guys can recognize this and help our veterans in so many ways. Well, the great thing is we have the backing of VA nationwide. Mm -hmm. You know, VA is the largest integrated healthcare system in the world. And so we work with our sister facilities and our hub in Pittsburgh. Uh, so if there's a specialty type service uh, that we cannot provide, we work directly with the specialists in Pittsburgh and use the technologies like telehealth to make sure we're getting cardiology bedside you know, at our facility mm -hmm. uh, and working with all the great specialists uh, to really leverage our uh, enterprise across the VA uh, to make sure that we're treating veterans not just here in Erie, but reaching out and uh, tapping those resources nationwide and specifically in Pittsburgh as our hub facility. 
That is, that's fantastic. I mean, I love hearing that because there's so many needs, and you guys are meeting so many needs, and we're going to be talking about that. You know what I want to touch base on first, though? I've run into different people uh, when I have, uh, oh, maybe they're having some uh, medical issues, and mm -hmm. I'll say, why don't you reach out to the VA? Mm -hmm. They have different excuses. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some different myths that people uh, seem to feel that they aren't going to be, they can't use your services. What are some of you guys probably hear them more than I. What are some of the popular myths of why they don't think they can use your services? Excellent question. So we do hear a number of different myths, specifically, and we'll go over a couple of them. John will tag team in here. Um, specifically, veterans will say, well, I didn't serve in combat, therefore I'm not a veteran. There's this idea that you are only a veteran if you served in combat, but that's not accurate. You are a veteran if you served in the um, military, you are a veteran, and you may be eligible for health care. So even if you were in during peacetime, even if you never went overseas, you still may be eligible for care. So okay. don't let that stop them from, from actually applying for, mm -hmm. for health care. Another one is uh, this I hear nine times out of ten from a World War II veteran stopping by our eligibility table saying, well, I want to go to the VA, but I want to save that appointment for another veteran, a, a guy or girl who came home recently. I want to make sure I save those appointments. Um, it is beautiful that these World War II veterans who fought in Battle of the Bulge are telling me, no, 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 Aww. save it for <laughs> save it for these new guys and girls coming home, um, when in reality, the way that we actually work is veterans, the more veterans that come to us, the more that are seen every year in primary care or whatever service that we have, then the more funding we get allocated. So therefore, we can provide more and more services, okay. open more and more right. resources sure. for mm -hmm. our veterans. So if that's something that's stopping our veterans today, please know that that is not true. Actually, by coming and seeking services, um, we're able to help more and more veterans. And to Sarah's point, you know, folks feel like, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm well, I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, the healthier you are, that's a good thing yeah. because you know, we get an allocation uh, based upon you know, seeing a veteran and based upon their complexity and their medical condition. But if you're healthy, that means those fundings may not be utilized on you as a veteran, but can be utilized to those who actually need it more. So every oh, okay. veteran who enrolls mm -hmm. in our system helps uh, other veterans in this county. So even if they are enroll and they may come to you for... Um um, just, just a checkup, just a, mm -hmm. just a physical once a year. They're in the system, mm -hmm. so it'll allocate funds to help. Absolutely. You. Oh yes. my gosh! I did. Now see. I didn't know that. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're dispelling the myths today. Okay. Uh, another common one that we hear all the time is, I make too much money, I'm over income, or I've been turned away before for being over income. Um, our eligibility is not all about income. It's not all about related to that. There okay. are other factors like service-connected injuries or illnesses, whether that's hearing loss or um, any type of disability or any, any service connection that can be tied to their military service. Also, when, where they serve might be a basis and factors to, to make them eligible. So it's not all about income. We still encourage you to come in, check out, see if you're eligible. If you're not, there might be certain other ways that we can help you become eligible by helping you oh. file a service-connected claim through either a veteran county uh, service officer or one of the other service officers here. Num myth number four, I want to go to the VA, but I don't want to lose my private health insurance. I hear that one. Right. I do. All the time. That's a concern, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no more. You can actually have <laughs> the best of both worlds. Yay. Exactly. You can see your private care uh, team in the community and also be seen at the VA. We really want them to come in. And the important thing to know is our providers will then coordinate that care with the community providers. So if you have a f uh, physician in the community and you're taking certain medications, uh, our provider will cross-check those medications, mm -hmm. knows, make sure there's no contraindications, uh, make sure everything's working together, and we can fill those scripts locally at the hospital, uh, most likely at a less cost uh, to the veteran wow. than they would with their other, okay. other insurance, and uh, we can co-manage their care. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, because I wasn't even sure about that myself. Absolutely. Exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. That's why we encourage veterans. So bottom line from all these myths, whatever your reason might be for yeah. uh, not coming to the VA, we ask that you come in, even if you've tried before, stop into our eligibility department. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. Bring your DD-214 service discharge papers um, and a copy possibly of your last year's financials. They might ask for that as well, but we encourage them to call to get enrolled because we have 
have everything from preventative health care, um, yoga coming up, mindfulness, uh, tai chi, different things coming up. So even if, if you aren't struggling with an illness, let's say, we have preventative health care coming, which we'll talk about in a little and bit. And one that's really near to, dear to my heart, uh, my grandmother was a Navy wave, so that was a first enlisted females. And so oh one my of the, gosh, I love it. Yes. I love so back it. in World War II, uh, both okay. my grandfather and my grandmother were right. in World War II. And um, the thing about female vets, and you know, I couldn't believe this until I actually firsthand saw this, uh, even a year ago at the Soldiers and Sailors Home, was talking to an uh, individual, a, a female. She was there as a vendor with another ent uh, healthcare entity. And she explained her condition um, in terms of uh, how she served and how she said, well, I can't utilize the VA because I'm not a veteran. And so our women's health program manager there, I was there and we looked at her and said, what do you mean you're not a veteran? She goes, well, my, my husband and my father and everybody else has said, well, you're not a veteran, you're a female. And it was one of those things mm -hmm. that, you know, it was almost jaw dropping at the time. And yes. we, we explained to her that no, you come to us, bring your DD-214, yeah. based on what you have verbally told us, sure appears that you're eligible for services, Needless to say, she worked with our women's health coordinator and today is receiving, receiving services at the VA. But that myth that there are some females who feel that, you know, mm -hmm. because they're a female, they're not a veteran, that myth is totally uh, false. Mm -hmm. uh, so we encourage all female vets who have served to come to the Erie VA. We have a women's health care program uh, and we have special services specifically, uh, gender specific for females. And they can have female doctors and um, provide a whole array of services. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. Yeah. Yes, yes. But you know what, you're right, that, that generation, you know, that past generation, mm -hmm. that's probably how they looked at it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we find that a lot. And one last one too, uh, that we hear from our, um, our friends that we work with at the, uh, the VFW and American Legions, is veterans have applied for service in the past and are told they weren't eligible. So that prevents them from now from coming back in because they think, you know, maybe 10 years ago, five years ago, they weren't eligible for care. Okay. What veterans need to know is that over time, there's different legislations, eligibility rules, your income may change, you know, your total assets may change. All those factors are very individualistic to you as an individual. Mm -hmm. So we encourage folks, even if they were told a year ago, five years ago, that they weren't eligible for care, come in, let us review your scenario. And it's always best to have all the administrative paperwork done uh, when you're healthy and, and doing well than it is when you really need it. So we encourage everybody, even if you've been told you haven't been eligible in the past, mm -hmm. to come on in, let us review things and see how we can help you. Do you find people that have, have served, that were, were in, in uh, uh, the service, they think they're automatically enrolled? Yes, and that's a fabulous question, especially veterans who have gone through um, filing for a service-connected claim. If they've mm -hmm. worked with the VBA office, which is Veterans Benefits Administration, that's different than our VHA, which is what we fall under as a medical center okay. under the mm -hmm. healthcare side. Um, and and that is definitely another myth that we have. So even if if you are receiving a disability, a service-connected um, claim of some sort that does not automatically enroll you in VA healthcare. So even if you do have that, please stop into the VA, register, enroll with your DD-214, and we'll get you set up. And, and veterans should know, uh, we actually have worked closely with regional office mm -hmm. to identify those veterans who fall into that category you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so over the coming months, we'll be reaching out to veterans uh, who really? may have not utilized yes. our services because we want to be proactive in this. Mm -hmm. you know, we want to sit back and be passive and wait for people to come. We do aggressive outreaches, mm -hmm. we have events throughout the community, and this is yet another way for us to personally contact veterans and invite them into the area VA to enroll for services. Oh my gosh, it's wonderful. Absolutely, yeah. community really involvement is. takes us to the next step, and we wanna Absolutely. actually come out to the veterans and have that presence there, so, so important. Okay, now I wanna talk about, um, when I drive past oh. the VA, Erie VA Center, you guys have a lot of stuff going on right there. I know you're working on some new construction projects. Right. Can, uh, a lot of viewers know exactly what you're working, the construction projects, and what can we expect to see from your campus in the future? Yeah, absolutely. We'll take a little tour, if you will, a virtual okay. tour around the facility <laughs> All right. campus. And, and know that this is a really um, an integrated and comprehensive plan with the support of our, our network office in Pittsburgh, our network director, capital asset manager, and folks in the central office who recognize these needs here locally. So we developed these plans that are aligned with VA's overall focus of modernization mm -hmm. of facilities and really focusing our core mission related to uh, mental health care, okay. primary care, geriatrics, and the subspecialties. 
Um, so it's really important you know, that we uh, you know, focus on those services. And to that end, we're building a brand new community living center. And that's the structure that you see as you're coming down 38th Street. Right. So it's a single uh, story dwelling. It'll have 22 private rooms. Wow. Uh, and this is really transformational in terms of the modernization. So imagine walking into a typical hospital, or if you've been in the VA hospital before on one of our units, we're taking one whole floor, and what you see out front is actually that floor. It's quite different. There's only one veteran in a room, not two, or in the past there were maybe even three in a right. room. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no shared baths. Right now we have shared baths between two mm -hmm. rooms. Uh, every veteran will have their own private bath, private shower. Um, there'll be nice family rooms, little cooking areas for veterans, little dens, little library areas, and ultimately courtyards outside for veterans to enjoy uh, a very home-like residential experience versus an institutional feel. Oh my so, gosh, wonderful. So that's a project that's uh, going to be uh, wrapped up here in the fall, and we'll look to have a ribbon cutting uh, later this uh, year. Mm -hmm. And we're very excited to you know, provide that uh, new, uh, very modern uh, home-like service to, uh, to our veterans. And then likewise, coming into the facility, you'll see uh, there's a, a new pathway that you see in the front yard, if you will. Well, that's going to be a brand new entrance to the facility. And we're working with uh, the local, state, county, PennDOT, uh, to put a uh, traffic light in there. Make it much more accessible, much more safer, uh, coming off of 38th Street. Yeah, much needed. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> you guys have a lot of traffic. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a couple new programs uh, for the VA also. Uh, we're actually doing construction on our sixth floor, a new program that has never been uh, at mm -hmm. this facility before. Uh, it's a much needed service for veterans. It's called the Residential Rehab Program. And basically what it is is a comprehensive, long-term, uh, intensive program where veterans are residents at the hospital and they work our, with our mental health providers to make sure that they're getting integrated mental health care and um, you know, occupational OT uh, all the services that they need to address whatever substance abuse issues they may have and ultimately transition them back into the community, back into a paying job, you know, back into an apartment or house. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a longer program. It's not just an acute detox type program. Okay. We're following mm -hmm. them throughout and they're with us for three to six months mm -hmm. and they're there seven days a week and receiving services every day. So it really focuses on making sure that you know, the, the tools and the resources that we're giving them to cope with whatever mm -hmm. uh, they're working through, any substance abuse or, or issues, uh, that those things are sticking okay. and they're going to be successful when they leave us and there's not going to be less recidivism, you know, for them to uh, be back or relapse into programs. And again, it's being proactive. Absolutely. Exactly. Because you're, you're looking at the, their future goal. Mm -hmm. right. It's not, let's, oh, let's just work and make this feel a little bit better. You're looking to see how you can improve their life in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. Right. And we thought it was important, I thought it was important mm -hmm. that we have the service here locally. Mm -hmm. um, veterans too. previously were going to Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, which is great mm -hmm. because other VAs do offer the same service. But having family support, especially if you're from the area, area is important to have family members come in, check with you, and you mm -hmm. feel comfortable in your own community environment. So we want to have the service right here in Erie for uh, veterans of Erie County and the surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. um, I read something here, a whole health program, and I, we're getting to the end. We have so many things we want to talk about. <laughs> yes, we do. But um, what's whole health, and uh, why, why is it so needed? Mm -hmm. So whole, all our whole health program really focuses on rebalancing, restoring, and refreshing. It focuses on the whole being of our veterans um, by offering alternative therapies specifically for those who have chronic pain. Um, a couple years ago, we brought on a pain management specialist uh, on board to really help those veterans who are struggling with chronic pain. Um, but this whole health is going to take it a next to the next step. A lot of feedback that we hear from our veterans is that I don't necessarily just want to be on medication. You know, I want to find alternative therapies that can really help me um, regain what I've been used to, to doing in my life. Right. So through this, we have um, five different alternative therapies that we're, we're starting with initially, which are chiropractic care, acupuncture, uh, yoga, mindfulness, and Tai Chi that we're going to initially roll out this year. And this is a brand new program. This when I, I, I read about this, I thought that was so exciting. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And because it's been proven, like, you know, the yoga and the mindfulness right. to help reduce stress and, the, and anxiety. Absolutely. Right. And you're dealing with a lot of that with our veterans. And really it's the transition to uh, focusing on what's important to the veteran. I mean, that mm -hmm. sounds pretty mm -hmm. basic and common sense approach, but, right. you know, medicine as it is, uh, focus on problems mm -hmm. and problem lists. 
versus mm -hmm. wellness. Mm -hmm. um, and so really this is again taking a proactive approach um, and providing alternatives to maybe typical or West traditional medicine that hadn't worked before mm -hmm. and allowing for some bridging therapies. Mm -hmm. um, and these are what are considered bridge therapies to ultimately self-care. And self-care just means that the veteran understands that you know going to the gym, walking, you know, nutrition, mm -hmm. all those things matter. And so the goal is to give them tools, techniques, um, bridging therapies so that they ultimately do this themselves. And so this isn't meant to be just, you know, something that you do for the rest of your life once you start it. It's meant to get over that hump, okay. see a new lifestyle, a new approach to doing things, mm -hmm. and then ultimately, you know, being able to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's getting back to the basics. So yeah. we're really excited to launch this. I will mention we are one of 18 facilities nationwide who are actually in, in, in implementing that. That's the word I was looking for. So really? We are one of 18 facilities in 2018. So we're really leading the way, leading Kudos the way. Kudos to so, Erie, yeah. guys. Thank you. Yes. I know we talked a bit about, um, we touched on uh, w women veterans, mm -hmm. what you have for them. Uh, my VA communities, what exactly is that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Once again, a proactive approach. Um, we and my philosophy is not to just be that the facility on the hill, uh, you know, on 38th Street, that people wonder what kind of happens there. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be very active and engaged in the community, and, and that's what we did from coming on board nearly two years ago now. Um, and what that means is we've engaged for-profit, not-for-profits, you know, county, government, um, businesses in the local community, and we've put together a community outreach and action team uh, chaired by local veterans. Uh, one of them is George Tanner. And the other one's Thad Plazinski, uh, who works with the county and uh, career services. Okay. And what it is is basically a forum and a network for veterans to come and for us to know each other so that any veteran coming to any of us for anything, it's not, I don't do that, we don't have that services, we're only health care, we're only county. We will refer those veterans to I, each other. Okay, yeah. I got it. And yeah. make sure the veteran, there is no wrong door. Right. You know, with a network of 20 plus partners mm -hmm. in the community throughout Erie County, no matter if it's you need furnishings for your apartment, whether it's you need a job, mm -hmm. whether you need help filing a claim, you know, the, there is no, we don't do that answer. Mm -hmm. We do it and I'll get you in touch and warm hand off to whomever can take care of you. And don't you think that's so important because when a veteran does come to you, first off, a lot of times they may feel frustrated to begin with right. mm -hmm. and sometimes it takes an awful lot for them to even admit that they need help. Absolutely. And then if, if somebody says, well, that's not me, you're going to have to call this per or, or I don't know where to go. Uh, right. Then they say, well, that's it then. I'm, I'm not going to try right. again. Chances are, but right say, away you take them right in and so say, you listen, say, go somewhere else or call yeah. a number. It's like, well, I think I, mm -hmm. I gave it my honest effort yeah. to try let's and I'm work. done. Yeah, right. Let's work this out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's that right. integrated community yes. of support. Yes, it is. Not just VA, but mm -hmm. all, all of Erie community. Yeah. And we have great partners, you know, yeah, with, the, with the American Legion, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Bonacci, and all the community partners right. are fantastic mm -hmm. in terms of supporting VA and the mission. And them being the veterans themselves, they get it. They understand the mission. Well, I hate to say it, but our show, our time's getting to an end, and I want to touch base on something that is so important. Uh, w with everything we've talked about, mm -hmm. we cannot forget volunteers, the need for volunteers. Absolutely, and we have such a thriving uh, base of volunteers. We have nearly 500 volunteers who help us really care for our veterans. So if any community members, um, 14 and up, are interested in giving back to veterans, we have a right fit for you right at the Erie VA Medical Center. Anything from escorting patients to and from their appointments to uh, being stationed at the welcome desk to really welcome them in, help direct them, especially like you mentioned. If it's your first time there, you're a little bit nervous. Yes, you know, you, you might I be a little bit frustrated. Mm -hmm. We have staff, and actually, it's a red coat program that's rolling out with our volunteers who are going to be there stationed to direct veterans to where they need to go. And our staff are truly great about doing that as well. So, if anybody's interested in getting in, uh, into volunteering, we have a number of opportunities. Mm -hmm. One I will mention is the uh, DAV Transportation Volunteer Driver Program. Okay. We are looking for drivers, if veterans, um, to transport veterans from their home to appointments. Okay. So that is a big need, but right. we really encourage people yeah, to check that out. We provide the vehicles, we provide a meal, mm -hmm. uh, the gas, 
uh, we just need uh, your time. Okay. And uh, really that gets appointment, uh, veterans through their appointments or maybe those who have uh, challenges getting to the facility, you know, door-to-door -door service. So mm -hmm. it's a great service the uh, Disabled American Veterans uh, offer. Uh, we really appreciate their support. They provide wonderful vehicles, all-wheel drive vehicles yeah. to uh, get veterans to and from their appointments. So really encourage folks to volunteer with that aspect. So, And what I liked is the fact that even if I don't have a, one skill set, mm -hmm. you're going to find some place. We'll we There's something for <laughs> everybody, right? <laughs> <Including> yes. <you>. <laughs> we'll sign you up. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Really the end. You know what, guys? Our show is, at, is coming to an end, but I have to thank you so much. Sarah, it's always a pleasure having you on the program. John, I am so glad you joined us, and I'm so glad you're here with us in Erie at the Erie VA. Um, you're growing leaps and bounds, and I know you are a big factor in that, thank so you. I thank you. I've always been... Yeah, we have a great team. I've always been proud that we've had the uh, VA right here in our own backyard. Mm -hmm. We're so... We're really lucky. I mean, you know, yeah. nobody has to travel. It's right here. Mm -hmm. Well, Judy, and thank you for having us on and helping us spread the word mm -hmm. about the Absolutely. services we have. Well, it is really my pleasure, and anytime you guys want to come on, and I'm hoping, uh, viewers, I am hoping they're going to let us take a little... Uh, on location, Absolutely. sneak peek <laughs> on their new facility Absolutely. before they open. So, again, thank you so much for joining thank us you. in the program. Thank you, Judy. Viewers, if you have any questions and you want to get any more information on some of the subjects that we talked about, and again, there is so much more than even just we, what we touch base on, please check out their website, give them a phone call. Uh, Facebook always has uh, up to the minute programs that are going on. So check that out. Again, viewers, thank you for tuning in and have yourself a wonderful day. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.